What's up guys, it's Rob here and today we're going to be talking about three penny stocks that have been majorly oversold and have big catalysts that could be moving them up massively. And if you guys know anything about penny stocks, you'll know that they're very risky but that they do have the potential to explode if the right catalysts occur and bring people's accounts to the next level. So those are the kinds of stocks that I'm going to be talking about today. The first stock is Mullen Automotive, ticker symbol MULN, and is currently trading around 31 cents per share. Mullen is an electric vehicle company which is attempting to make the longest range electric vehicle in history, and they've actually had great success with this so far. They've been researching and developing solid-state polymer battery cells for years, and in recent months, they've been able to make massive improvements to their prototypes. In fact, the CEO of Mullen said that tests have shown with almost certainty that once this technology is implemented into their vehicles, they'll be able to attain up to 600 miles of range on a full charge. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the current longest range electric vehicle is the Lucid Air Dream, which can attain about 520 miles of range before it runs out of juice. So you can see the big improvement that Mullen's battery technologies would make. In addition, selling a vehicle with that kind of range could be very profitable for them because the Lucid Air Dream sells for about $170,000. And the main reason that people buy that vehicle is because of its long range. Now, it will take Mullen a long time to benefit from this catalyst because in-vehicle prototype testing for their battery technology is set to begin in 2025. Fortunately, there are plenty of other things that should help to boost Mullen up in the meantime. One of the most prevalent being that they've made some acquisitions over the past couple of months due to the market being in an overall downturn, causing a lot of electric vehicle companies to either go bankrupt or be very cheap for them to acquire. Some notable purchases they've made include Bollinger Motors, an EV truck manufacturer, as well as Electric Last Mile Solutions, another EV company at risk of bankruptcy, which Mullen decided they could save. These acquisitions should provide Mullen with the capacity to produce up to 50,000 electric vehicles per year, as well as with plenty of intellectual property, which they can use to continue developing cutting-edge EVs. What you need to understand about Mullen, though, is that the catalysts for this stock could be taking a long time to actually play out. That's because, like most small EV companies, they're mainly focused on research and development. And at the time when I began recording this video, they hadn't actually released a vehicle for sale yet. But just recently, Mullen announced that they had purchased the rights to sell the iGo, a last mile delivery electric vehicle, which they planned to sell mainly in Europe. Now, this vehicle wasn't developed by them, they've just purchased the rights to sell it. The earliest people can expect to receive a vehicle developed by them will be in 2024 when they release the Mullen 5. And this is the main reason why they're still a penny stock and haven't been able to maintain a higher valuation despite all of the positive developments that have been occurring for them. Investors are typically very wary of investing in products that are unproven with large amounts of capital, and that's the case with Mullen as well at least among institutional investors. You see, Mullen has actually gained a large following of retail investors who are willing to take the bet that Mullen will be the next big EV stock. And on many stock analysis platforms, there are often more people discussing Mullen Automotive than are discussing other large EV stocks like Neo or Tesla. Many of these retail investors are actually talking about Mullen because they're hoping if they can get enough people to pile in, then they could potentially trigger a short squeeze and get some easy gains out of Mullen. And while that's possible, that's not why I'm excited about Mullen. I'm excited about the stock because of the long-term potential I see in them as a company and the massive developments they've made in their battery technology, as well as the fact that they've been massively oversold over the past 52 weeks alongside the overall market, making them a cheap buy in my opinion. Now, the next stock we've got to talk about is SNDL, and that's both the company name and ticker symbol. SNDL is a Canadian cannabis company and is currently priced at $2.33, has a market cap of $568 million, a 52-week low of around $2, and a 52-week high close to $10. So as you can see, Sundial is trading much closer to its low than its high, and that's because it operates in the cannabis space, which hasn't been receiving much love over the past couple of months. But that hasn't stopped the company from growing rapidly because they've been making acquisitions over the past year, but we'll touch more on that later. You see, Sundial came into popularity back in early 2021 when it was named a meme stock alongside stocks like AMC and GameStop, causing it to soar in price to over $40 per share, catching many investors by surprise and blowing up the accounts of many retail traders. Unfortunately, it proceeded to move much lower alongside the entire economy and with every other meme stock out there as we've been in a fairly significant recession. But when SNDL was at its all-time highs, it was able to offer stock to the public and raise tons of cash as a result. 
They were then able to use that cash in the following months to strategically make acquisitions, which expanded their reach in the cannabis sector, as well as the alcohol space, which pairs pretty well thematically with their existing products. But regardless of these acquisitions, there's one major catalyst out there which has the potential to skyrocket SNDL alongside every other cannabis stock out there at the drop of a hat, and that is federal cannabis legalization. This is something that's been talked about by politicians for years, and every time it looks like it has a good chance of going through, cannabis stocks start to move up in really significant ways. Even this month, we saw many cannabis stocks moving up, at least temporarily, as it looked like Biden might start to help the legalization effort when he announced on Twitter that he would be pardoning prisoners for cannabis possession, urging governors to do the same, and reviewing how cannabis is scheduled, which is likely to lead to it no longer being classified as a Schedule One substance. And while it looks like at the moment politicians are more concerned with getting reelected than they are with passing full-scale comprehensive cannabis legalization, there's still a significant chance this could be happening in the future, as most Americans are actually in support of cannabis legalization, and fewer than 10% of adults say the cannabis should still be illegal. When legalization finally comes, it's likely many traders will be looking for cannabis stocks to buy, and if history is any indication, many of them will end up piling into SNDL, raising the price dramatically and rewarding people who were able to get in early. And for the next stock, we have Northern Dynasty Minerals, ticker symbol NAK. NAK is a Canadian gold and copper mining company, currently trading at $0.24, cents, has a market cap of $132 million, a 52-week low of $0.24, cents, and a 52-week high of $0.51. Cents. So you can see it's trading much closer to its low than its high, and that's because this stock has been getting battered alongside falling gold prices. Typically, precious metal mining companies trade very similarly to the price of the underlying assets which they mine, meaning that when the price of gold goes up, so does the price of many gold mining stocks. But when the price of gold goes down, it takes the price of those stocks down with it. This is because when valuing a gold mining stock, investors pay close attention to the estimated value of the gold those companies have available to them in their mines. And so, when the value of gold goes up, so does the value of the mines which these companies control, and investors take notice of this. In fact, back when gold was moving up due to inflation fears and a surplus of stimulus in mid-2020, NAK was moving up alongside it and pumped all the way to $2 off of the hype. But NAK isn't completely reliant on the price of gold moving up in order to pump again. The most exciting thing about NAK is that they have 100% controlling interest in the Pebble Partnership, which is the largest undeveloped copper, gold, molybdenum, silver, and rhenium resource in the entire world. And the only thing stopping them from developing the Pebble Project is that the EPA has blocked the project due to environmental concerns. And while I don't know enough to determine the environmental impact that a mine like this could have, the issue isn't entirely one sided as 14 states strongly oppose the EPA's veto on construction of the mine, and there's currently a massive need for new copper supplies to come online if we want to have any hope of achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Regardless, the future of the Pebble project is still up in the air and none too certain, which is causing this stock to either be trading at a massive discount or way above where it should be. The future of NAK will likely be determined by the future of the Pebble project, and if it's approved, then anyone holding the stock before then could be experiencing some significant gains. But since that's not a guarantee, there's still some significant risk. Keep in mind, none of this is financial advice, and I'll see you next time.